Let the old hag pay for it. It's free, so eat a lot. Apparently, that's what Michelle, my son's wife, had said. I was taken aback, having not been told about treating anyone to premium steak, and I couldn't help but exclaim. I was then on the phone with my son, William, when Michelle snatched the phone to explain. I began questioning Michelle, who was insistent on being treated. Where is that steak from? Huh? Why? Just tell me. What's the name of the restaurant? Hearing the seriousness in my voice, Michelle was slightly irritated and responded, What's her deal? It's from a premium steak place in the next town. Do you mean this place here? As I mentioned the name of the restaurant, Michelle sounded utterly shocked. My name is Susan. I'm 78 years old. I've been in this industry for about 50 years now. By this industry, I mean the food and beverage business. Marrying a chef turned my life completely around. For me, who used to be a secretary, this was a whole new world. I often got reprimands from my husband and the staff, but they were teaching me the ropes. I understood that their scolding came from a place of love, so I never took it to heart. Far from getting down about it, I've always had a determined spirit. Every day, I strive to prove myself and earn their respect. William, get the dish for table three ready. It looks like it's going to be done soon. Got it? Our restaurant was busy every day, but my husband and I enjoyed working together, supporting each other. Until William decided to start his own place, he used to work in the kitchen, helping in the restaurant, while also learning the craft. We knew he had considered taking over our place, but we respected his wish to try his hand at his own place. Years later, after completing his training, William finally achieved his dream of opening his own restaurant. The big day, huh, William? Dear best, I don't know how far I can go, but I'm gonna make it a success and make a name just as big, if not bigger, than you guys. Seeing our son so cheerful and determined, we felt proud of how he had grown up. And soon after the restaurant opened, he married Michelle, whom he had been dating for some time. I thought William and the others would lead a wonderful life and be happy. No one expected that this marriage would be a turning point for our family. Our restaurant was a large establishment emphasizing traditional American dishes. The setting was in a classic American style and many of our patrons were adults. While there were families, the atmosphere of the restaurant felt a bit formal, perhaps a bit intimidating for younger folks to come in alone. On the other hand, William's place was the exact opposite. He had set up something reminiscent of a family diner, which was a unique concept in our small town. Word quickly spread and it became a hit. The food was impeccable and especially popular among children. They had a variety of kids' meals and a wide range of delightful desserts for the ladies, making it one of the most popular joints in town. As proud parents, we often boasted about it. We had never expected our son to strike out on his own and achieve such success. Every time someone praised the restaurant, my husband and I would offer them a complimentary dish out of sheer joy. However, there was one person who took advantage of our goodwill, my son's wife, Michelle. On this particular day, I happened to run into her at the local supermarket. As soon as she saw me, she gave a smirk as if mocking. For some reason, she had always had it out for me and often made snide remarks. I braced myself for her usual sarcasm. Out for groceries again? At your age, you're still running the restaurant, huh? Her comments had unfortunately become part of my routine. I couldn't help but sigh at her usual tone, but I had grown used to her jealousy. After all, my husband was a bit of a local celebrity, known for his handsome looks and culinary expertise. When he took over the business, it was quite the talk of the town. His friends would say, you finally took over, huh? They flooded in and came to congratulate us. The transition of generations was quite a hectic period. Apparently, there were even some women who frequented our restaurant back then just to be around my husband. That's the husband I married. Naturally, I've been through my fair share of ordeals. Thanks to all that, I've become mentally tougher. People even joked you have so much nerve. Of course, my husband and I are going to keep working until we can't anymore. Well, do your best, I guess. You won't ever catch up to our business anyway. While our store was profitable, Williams was even more flourishing, bustling every day. When they first opened, he, he relied heavily on my husband for help. But now, 
With an increased number of employees, it seems they're sailing smoothly every day. However, Michelle always compares her store to ours, using their success as leverage. I was like, what's the point of saying things like that? Before I knew it, my thoughts had slipped out of my mouth. What's the point of bragging about your family's business? Why do you always bring up such trivial matters? Who would be jealous of a son's successful store? You might say that, but I know you badmouth us behind our backs. Looking down on us now, but one day the tables will turn on you folks. With those ominous words, Michelle snorted, ignoring my response and leaving the scene. I was left dumbfounded watching her walk away. Her harassment didn't stop, it only got worse. Spreading false rumors about our restaurant, posting negative comments on social media. Eventually, a nasty rumor spread that I, as her mother-in-law, was maliciously slandering her. Of course, I never said anything of the sort. Heaven knows I've never even spoken ill of my own family to anyone. I was so overwhelmed by the situation that I was bedridden from the shock for days. Why was all of this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? Gradually, my patience wore thin and frustration turned to resentment. Michelle wasn't like this before their marriage. She was incredibly charming with a demeanor perfectly suited for customer service. In fact, right before their wedding, when William was thinking of starting his business, she expressed her wish to learn customer service and even helped out at our restaurant. Customers loved her, even praising her hospitality. Both my husband and I thought my son was blessed with a wonderful partner. But not long after William's business took off, Michelle's attitude changed. To this day, I still don't know what sparked the current situation. Even when I try to discuss it, I'm just brushed off like now, and there's no genuine conversation. Now it feels like all we've ever done is exchange sarcastic remarks. A few days later, on a particular day while I was out with my husband, a call from William came to my cell phone. Hello? Oh, Mom, are you free now? Yeah. What's up? The tone of William's voice over the phone was low, and from the way he spoke with such a serious demeanor, I instinctively straightened up to listen. Did Michelle tell you anything today? Huh? What are you talking about? Caught off guard by his sudden question, I stammered out a response. But William, seeming somewhat anxious, continued. Something about treating her to a meal or some plan like that. Didn't Michelle tell you anything? Nope, haven't heard a thing about that. Why? I thought so then, that means... What happened? Without really understanding, I asked him to elaborate. William hesitated, but then shared the situation with difficulty. Actually, one of Michelle's friends is at my place today, and well, they ordered some premium steak. Oh, that's nice. Everyone deserves a treat once in a while. Regardless of how much I might resent her, that's a different story. Working in the same industry, I believe I understand the challenges and hardships. Occasional treats are only natural. Thinking along those lines, William seemed to have a different perspective. The steak is fine, but what they said when they ordered, it's just weird. What did they say? Hearing my question, William hesitated, struggling to find the words. I had a hunch it was about me, but when I heard the words, my face contorted in anger. Let the old hag pay. It's free, so eat up. That's what Michelle had said. I exclaimed in shock. At the same time, my anger reached its peak, knowing I had been spoken of in that manner. My voice became unintentionally harsh. Who are you calling an old hag? I haven't agreed to pay for anything, nor have I been informed about anything. Well, yeah. It's the first time I've heard someone call an old hag. I did think it might not be you, but then the conversation I overheard with a regular sounded a lot like you. A regular? Michelle is a friend of a regular at my diner. Well, she became a regular, and then they became friends. They're having dinner at my place today. Oh, but I wasn't told anything about that. While we were discussing, there was a sudden rustling sound in the background, and with William's frantic voice, someone else took over the call. Hello, is this Susan? It's Michelle. It seemed that Michelle had realized William was on the phone with me and had taken the phone from him. Michelle, what's going on? You heard from William, right? That makes things easier. I'd appreciate if you could treat us to dinner. Her words, delivered in a cutesy tone as if she was looking for praise, honestly irked me. But of course, I wouldn't show such a childish reaction and spoke calmly. 
Listen, Michelle, just because we're family, do you think you can get away with doing things without asking? Why are you being so stingy? It's just a little favor. I mean, you guys are doing quite well for yourselves, aren't you? Hey, you. Who do you think you're talking to, like that? You be quiet. The outrageous words flying out of Michelle's mouth left me speechless. And William probably realized for the first time how she was behaving towards me. He tried to intervene, but it seems she brushed him off. A stake or two with your income, it's not a big deal, right? I'm asking about the principle of making someone pay without even consulting them. I'm your son's wife, after all. Can't you treat me to something nice every once in a while? What is she even saying? She got caught, and instead of apologizing, she's doubling down. The audacity of her words left me so stunned that I couldn't even respond. Respond, at any rate, thanks for the steak. Seeing me lost for words, Michelle grew impatient and tried to forcefully end the conversation. But I wasn't going to let it end like that and spoke up. At my serious tone, Michelle retorted with an irritated voice, as if thinking, what's her deal? It's from a premium steak place in the next town. Do you mean this place here? Huh? How did you know the name of that restaurant? Well, this place is managed by my husband's apprentice. I then switched to a video call and prompted Michelle to look at the screen. Displayed was the very place where they were ordering their premium steak, and it was also where William and I were dining. It seemed Michelle was unaware of our presence at the restaurant because she had ordered over the phone. Moreover, they arrived before us, and only the chef knew of the situation. The chef had later informed us that Michelle had placed such a large order and intended to bill it to me. I was waiting for her to contact me all along. The earlier shock was all an act, a small revenge on my part. In truth, I had been informed of the whole situation from the start. The reason we were here was thanks to my husband who, worried about my health, had invited me out for a change of scenery. The chef, aware of this, generously offered to close the restaurant just for us. Our pleasant time was thus interrupted. This minor retaliation seems gentle given the circumstances. Fine, then make sure you cover the bill for us. Although Michelle seemed momentarily flustered at the revelation, she appeared to reassure herself, thinking it would be alright since we were there. It seemed she took for granted that we would cover her tab. I couldn't help but smirk amusingly at her. I'm sorry to disappoint, but the chef already informed me about your scheme. The bill will be charged directly to you. What? Where did that sweet purring voice go just now? Her true colors seemed to show, and the surprised reaction from William nearby was evident. Unperturbed by everything, Michelle lashed out with a sharp tone. Why should we cover it? We didn't know any better. Why should we pay, especially for your friends we don't even know? You're my husband's mother. Isn't it only right for a family to cover the bill? Don't pull that card only when it's convenient for you. Do you have any idea how much I've had to endure your sarcasm and harassment? Taking advantage of William's ignorance, do you think I don't know what you've been up to all this while? There's only so much I can take. I couldn't stand by as she accused me especially when I wanted her to understand the gravity of her misdeeds. The more I spoke, the more intense my tone became, and Michelle seemed taken aback. Tell me, why did you start treating me this way? You weren't like this at first. Did I do something wrong? All the harassment I had been subjected to until now, I wanted to understand. If I was at fault, I was willing to apologize and resolve the issue. But the words that came out of Michelle's mouth were unexpected. I've been saying it all along. Susan has been bad-mouthing me. I heard you've been spreading rumors around the neighborhood that I'm not a good wife. Some customers told me. Tears streamed down Michelle's face as she spoke. I sighed deeply, exasperated by her words. I've been telling you, I never said any of that. I don't know who that person is. But do you think it's okay to believe in such rumors without even checking with me and harass me like this? If you really believe I said those things, bring the person who claimed that to me. I can bring it out, Michelle replied with unexpected confidence. Upon hearing the story, it turned out that the friend Michelle had invited today was the very person spreading false rumors about me. I conveyed like I'm gonna see her. 
so make sure to keep her there. My husband and I thanked the chef, paid our bill, and left the restaurant. After a short drive we arrived at our son's house, spotting a familiar bicycle at the entrance. This bicycle is... Before I could finish I hurried inside. To my astonishment, I found a woman devouring steak in the living room. She seemed equally surprised and choked on her steak when she saw me. Long time no see. When was the last time? Since you got banned from her place? As I flashed a sinister grin at the flustered woman, she trembled with fear. Huh? Do you know each other? Since the woman hesitated to respond to Michelle's question, I explained the situation on her behalf. She used to be obsessed with my husband and got banned from her place. Michelle and William both gasped in surprise upon hearing that, and I continued. She couldn't accept that he married me, so she kept harassing us day in and day out, which led to her ban. So the bad things she was saying about you? Of course they were all lies. Seriously, who in their right mind would badmouth their own family to a customer just because they're annoyed? Visibly exasperated, I approached the two women with a wide grin. You've done quite a lot, haven't you? Taking my hospitality for granted, spreading nasty rumors about our restaurant and claiming I was bad-mouthing my son's wife. How are you planning to take responsibility for spreading such baseless rumors? My confronting demeanor was later described as having a devilish smile by William and my husband. Seeing my expression, both Michelle and the woman were terrified. Michelle clung to William's leg, sobbing. Wait, William, it's not like that? I was deceived by her. Please believe me, I didn't know. Hearing that, William became furious and raised his voice angrily. I knew you were always talking about Mom's restaurant. You never even checked with her, and you're acting all innocent now? Don't think you're getting off easily? No way. Trying to seize the moment, the regular woman attempted to escape, but my husband quickly restrained her. Michelle, realizing the gravity of the situation, dropped her shoulders in resignation. I decided to call a lawyer friend of mine. Due to their social media posts and defamation against me, both of them were charged with defamation. The regular woman seemed to have finally given in and agreed. However, on the other hand, Michelle kept insisting that she was just influenced by her. She showed an attitude of wanting to fight against the claims, but she personally didn't have the money to take it on, and William decisively stated he wasn't going to pay for such a thing. Feeling betrayed by Michelle, William proposed a divorce, leading to an unexpected divorce and being charged with defamation. Since then, the defamation was acknowledged and she was charged with a compensation fee. Currently, their divorce process is ongoing, but it's likely to be finalized soon. William was deeply distressed, but luckily his diner was so busy that he didn't have time to brood over it. As time went on, his demeanor gradually became brighter. Then, our family decided to visit the premium steakhouse we used to frequent. The chef had invited William and me to lift our spirits, having the place to ourselves for the evening. This is delicious, I exclaimed. I've never had a steak this good before. Yeah, William agreed. I never thought you'd become such a respected chef during your apprentice days. But now I see why you're famous. If she hadn't done that stupid thing, I added, she could have been here enjoying this steak with us. It was almost laughable now how much we as a family had overcome. Thanks to the chef's generosity, we were treated with extra hospitality that day. Eating delicious steak with my beloved family was more than anything the best time we ever had. Dylan, how could you? I asked, feeling betrayed. You kicked out your wife and kid to do this with me in broad daylight. I don't see Emily as a woman, Dylan replied callously. She's just the maid. But I'm kind, so I sometimes give the maid a day off. Dylan had gifted me a trip to a spa in Palm Springs. Right after he saw me and Ariel off with a smile, he was caught in a compromising position with his mistress. And in our very own bedroom, no less. Suddenly a voice came from the front door. Mom, are you still here? Panicking, Dylan and his companion scrambled from one end of the room to the other before darting out onto the balcony. Ariel's expression when she arrived was chillingly knowing. Making such a racket, did you see a nasty bug or something? A bug or something like it. Ew, that's gross. Exactly. Gotta deal with it properly. Keeping my composure, I locked the balcony door with a loud click. Beyond the lace curtains, a silhouette cowered. 
Mom, I really hate bugs. No mercy for bugs, right? Nodding deeply, I dialed a number. My name is Emily Johnson, 47 years old. I got married 12 years ago. I met my husband Dylan at the office. He was hired mid-career and I was assigned as his mentor. We quickly became friends. Not only was Dylan diligent in his work, but he also had a warm personality. He could easily get along with anyone, making him a favorite in the office in no time. The female employees loved him, and the male employees trusted him. Hey Dylan, seriously you don't have a girlfriend? Then let's go out for drinks. A younger female colleague teased him, trying to hide my jealousy. I realized I had already fallen for the popular Dylan, but I couldn't even casually ask him out for lunch. I thought I'd keep these feelings a secret. However, out of the blue, Dylan approached me. You know, I've fallen for you, Emily. Your modesty and the careful attention you give to things. It's wonderful. Next thing I knew, we were headed towards marriage. After our wedding, I decided to retire from my job. I wanted to continue working, but Dylan strongly wished for me to be a stay-at-home wife. Given our age, he also wanted kids soon. That's why, soon after I left work, I was shocked by his words. Just living off my money and lazing around, huh? You're worthless. I soon discovered that Dylan was only kind on the outside, especially about my being a homemaker. I told him I wanted to return to work, but he wouldn't allow it. Think you can handle both housework and a job? Don't embarrass me by showing everyone how useless you are. Just stay home and know your place. I couldn't believe this was the same Dylan I had known. Many of our colleagues lived in our apartment building, which wasn't company housing, but was conveniently located near our workplace. Whenever Dylan met a colleague in the apartment building, he would greet them with a friendly smile. Sometimes he would even casually put his arm around my shoulder. I would stiffen up in surprise, but people thought we were just a sweet couple. I once vaguely discussed my husband's behavior with a colleague, but I quickly regretted it. I realized that Dylan was not the kind and caring person I thought he was. He only cared about his image and controlling me. I wanted to return to work, but he wouldn't allow it. He wanted me to be a stay-at-home wife and have children, even though I had my own dreams and aspirations. I couldn't believe how selfish and controlling he had become. I was trapped in a marriage with a man who only cared about himself. I discussed my husband's behavior with an old colleague. Dylan is kind of rude at home, a complete opposite of how he is outside. That's kind of cute, in a weird way. I still find it hard to accept reality. There's no way my former colleague who only knows Dylan's facade would doubt him. But you know, I just can't picture Dylan acting all high and mighty. Maybe Emily's just overthinking it? Moreover, Dylan is trusted more by society than I am. They just brushed it off as me being overly sensitive. My parents reacted the same way. Emily has always been the worrying type. Maybe kind-hearted Dylan is just tired from being considerate to everyone outside. Emily, you have to support him. It felt like they were implying that I was in the wrong. The more I spoke ill of Dylan, the more I feared I would become the villain. Even though I felt uncomfortable at home, I became pregnant and gave birth. The birth of our daughter, Ariel, brought a significant change to our relationship. Dylan absolutely adores Ariel. Thankfully, he stopped nagging me in front of her. When Ariel is asleep, he still goes, Did you take a nap again today? You sure have a lot of free time, but it's less frequent. Ever since Ariel was a baby, Dylan would eagerly take her out and show her off to the entire neighborhood. The neighbors always praise him as a good dad. What? Me a good dad? Nah, I'm just average. Playing with my daughter makes all the work stress. Go away. Besides, I have to give my wife some alone time too. Nah, I'm no super dad, that's for sure. Dylan, always playing with Ariel in the park in front of our apartment complex, not only earned the title of a good husband, but also of a wonderful father. But the truth is, he goes out drinking every night and comes home late. At home, he's always on his phone and ignores Ariel. To top it off, sometimes he stays out overnight saying I'm exhausted from work and parenting. I need a break. He sure knows how to put on a show. What a sneaky man. Moreover, he frequently buys things to get Ariel's attention. It's nice, right? Can you say thank you to Daddy? Thank you, Daddy. Do you love Daddy? I love you so much. I understand that he wants to see Ariel smile. 
but he's just baiting her with things. Once he's satisfied with that, he won't pay attention to Ariel anymore. When Ariel was younger, she genuinely enjoyed his gifts. But gradually she became confused by Dylan's fluctuating attitude, sometimes being very kind and other times being distant. Now that she's in fourth grade, she shows happiness when she receives something. But she does not fully understand the true intentions behind Dylan's actions. But she doesn't initiate any interaction with Dylan. One day I received a call from one of Ariel's friend's moms. She is Kate, a former colleague of mine. Although we didn't interact much at work, our kids happen to be in the same grade, and we live in the same apartment complex, so we became close. When I answered the call, Kate's shouting pierced my ears. Your daughter stole my daughter's video game. Apparently, Ariel had gone over to Kate's house after school and had supposedly stolen a video game. What kind of parenting are you doing? She's twisted. I trembled at her one-sided tirade. I promised to come over to her house after talking to Ariel and somehow ended the call. I didn't steal anything, Ariel pleaded, tears in her eyes. I know mom believes in you. After hearing Ariel's side of the story, I began to think that maybe Kate had just misunderstood. Just then Dylan came home out of breath. That thief! Dylan punched the wall with all his might. His fist sank into it. I hurriedly embraced a frozen Ariel. Stop it, Dylan, just listen. It's your fault, raising Ariel to be like a thief. Kate, who currently works with Dylan, must have contacted him too. Dylan forcefully pushed me away. Grabbing Ariel's arm, he dragged her to Kate's house. I'm so sorry, Dylan's voice echoed in the apartment hallway. Rushing over, Ariel was being forced to kneel on the ground and apologize. Kate's husband rushed to help Ariel up, and he also began to apologize. Kate said in a monotone voice, I'm sorry, seems like there was a misunderstanding. Turns out Ariel wasn't a thief after all. Kate scratched her chin, looking embarrassed. Her husband kept apologizing. Dylan laughed gently. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't worry about it. As I was about to speak, Dylan twisted my finger from behind. Though he only showed his parental side when it was convenient, I believed that Dylan loved Ariel. But now, I realized he cared more about his reputation than his beloved daughter. When we got home, Dylan gave a faint smile and apologized to both me and Ariel. Sorry about that. I got really rattled. Kate called and she was super mad. Wait, Kate? Oh, we work in the same department now and she's been good to me. So, you know, having our kids squabble affect our work is just not cool, right? You gotta understand where I'm coming from. In the end, it was all about him. My anger surged, causing pain in my back from the earlier injury. My face twisted in discomfort. It's okay, I reassured myself. With that, Ariel retreated to her room. Hey, <laughs> Ariel is so mature, I thought to myself. Way more than you, Emily, always looking upset. Feeling validated by Ariel's forgiveness, Dylan casually started drinking a beer. The next night, he came home early, seemingly filled with remorse. You're not mad anymore? He asked tentatively. Look, I got you something. He showed me his smartphone, displaying a reservation screen for a hot spring inn. As an apology, he explained. I booked it for this weekend, just for the two of us. The inn was located about an hour from our home in a spa town. Even though it was close by, it was a luxurious getaway that we had never experienced as a family. Amazingly, there's even an open-air bath in the room, I exclaimed. Ariel and I exchanged glances and smiled, reminiscing about our last family vacation. It had been years since we had taken one, as Dylan never enjoyed family-friendly hotels or amusement parks. Traveling with kids is so boring, he would often complain. Why do I have to entertain them all the time? Due to the constant unpleasant atmosphere during supposed-to-be-fun trips, the idea of vacationing had vanished from our household. But now that Ariel was grown up, I hoped she would enjoy relaxing at spa resorts. On the day of the trip, Dylan waved us off from the doorway with a big smile. Don't worry about me. Just go have fun with your girl time, he said. Ariel and I happily headed towards the train station. As we were thinking of grabbing a coffee at the station, I suddenly realized, oh no, I left my wallet. Oh mom, sorry, sorry, Ariel apologized. At least I noticed before we left, I replied. True. Holding our slightly heavy bags, we hurried back the way we came. Ariel sat down on a bench in front of our apartment saying, 
I'm exhausted. I took the elevator up to our apartment alone. As I tried to take off my shoes at the entrance, something felt off. Whose shoes are these? I wondered, noticing a pair of women's shoes haphazardly kicked off. Holding my breath, I could hear Dylan's voice coming from the bedroom. I gifted her a spa trip and she easily got in a good mood, he was saying. Such a simple woman. Then a woman's laughter echoed. Dylan, you're so bad, she teased. Sending off your wife and daughter just so you can have fun with me in broad daylight. I recognized the voice as Kate's. Even though it wasn't hot, I felt an uncomfortable sweat. I don't even see Emily as a woman, Dylan continued. She's just a housemaid. But being the kind guy he was, he sometimes gave our maid a day off. Kind? Who says? It's so unfair that I gave up the spa resort I was supposed to go to. With you. You know what, Kate? Because of you, Emily was super mad at me. I felt guilty about staying out overnight and didn't want to pay the cancellation fee for the resort. So using the trip to appease my maid seemed like a smart move. Not only am I kind, but I'm also clever. I quietly approached the bedroom. Peeking through the slightly open door, I saw Dylan and Kate intertwined in an indecent manner. My vision began to blur. Anger? I couldn't quite understand the emotions bubbling within me. Just staring at the entangled figures, I muttered under my breath, disgusting. Hearing my voice, the playful actions of Dylan and Kate came to a halt. In that sudden silence, the sound of the front door opening rang out. Mom, what's taking so long? Dylan and Kate panicked, looking around for an escape. But with my shadow at the door, they had nowhere to go. Ariel's footsteps got closer. Both of them rushed from one end of the room to the other and finally bolted to the balcony. Despite the lack of an outdoor hot tub, they stood exposed in all their glory. Ariel, who had just entered, looked stern. What's all the fuss? Did you see a nasty bug or something? Something like a bug, yeah. Ew, that's gross, right? We need to deal with it properly. There I was, oddly calm. Avoiding the discarded clothes on the floor, I advanced into the room and locked the balcony door with a loud click. Two silhouettes crouched behind the lace curtains. Mom, I really hate bugs. Ariel stared at me intensely. I had thought I was alone. But there was Ariel right beside me showing unwavering trust. We shouldn't show any mercy to bugs, should we? As I nodded deeply, I made a phone call. After a while, I unlocked the balcony door. A cool and refreshing breeze flowed in from the wide open window. It's a pleasant season, perfect for going out. So, so cold. A naked couple tumbled into the room, blue from the cold. With her cheeks burning from cold and embarrassment, Kate dove straight into the bed. Pushing Kate aside, Dylan also wrapped himself in the blanket. Emily, do you even realize what you've done? Dylan's eyes were filled with rage as he bellowed with a deep, angry voice. And what about you, Dylan? Why aren't you dressed? Startled, Dylan pulled the blanket up to cover his mouth. Seems like his anger from being locked out on the balcony had burst out. But I really want to know what he and Kate were doing in this room to begin with. What were you two doing? When I asked again, Dylan clicked his tongue in annoyance. Jeez, lay off. You saw, right? We were just play wrestling. Dylan joked, making Kate burst out laughing. Yeah, yeah. We're wrestling buddies, you know? Oh, did you, Emily, imagine something else? Oh my, for someone so plain, you have a wild imagination, huh? How embarrassing. Despite being caught in a situation they couldn't deny, they seemed quite amused. To them, I was nothing more than a lowly presence. I knew this would happen, that's why Ariel wasn't here. To them, I'm just a nobody, nothing to fear. Don't play games. You were cheating, weren't you? I uttered in a low voice. Both of their laughter came to an abrupt halt. With a dismissive tone, Dylan said, so what? I was at a loss for words. Just as I tried to speak up, Dylan beat me to it. Yeah, I cheated. Is that wrong? It's not my fault you, Emily, lack any charm as a woman. Don't act all high and mighty. I've never once had romantic feelings for you. You're just like a housekeeper I hired. I already knew the love was gone, but having it said outright hurt deeply. Seeing I wasn't replying, Dylan confidently continued, Thanks to me working and bringing in the money, you and Ariel can live. Your futures depend on me. You know what happens when you go against me, right? I kept my head down, not responding. 
slowly lifted my head to see Dylan with a gentle smile, the kind he shows to others. It's all right. I'm kind and I won't abandon you, Emily or Ariel. You're a perfect modest housewife and I'll keep you by my side. The thought of continuing to live with Dylan sent chills down my spine. That's enough. Before I could say more, a voice from behind rose loudly. The room's door flew open and my mother stormed in with determination. Oh, Emily's mom? Both Dylan and Kate clutched their blankets. Following my mother, my father also walked in. Oh, and Emily's dad too? What's going on? Dylan, clearly panicked, was told by me. I called them. What? why This is an ambush. That's low. Dylan murmured, cowering into the blanket. Wanting a face-to-face -face conversation, I handed them bath towels. Finally, after coming out from under the blankets, we sat them down in front of my parents and me. Dylan's face was pale, and Kate was fixing her towel's hem with a displeased look. Dylan, I always thought you were a wonderful husband. To think you've been belittling me and our marriage like this. Belittling Emily at home, my mother said, sobbing. I misjudged you, Dylan. You're like a person with two faces, my father added, giving him a sharp look. I'm so sorry. I never wanted to cheat. But Emily was so into Ariel and she never paid attention to me, so I felt lonely. So, on a whim, Dylan, still clinging to his good guy facade, makes excuses one after the other. My father glares daggers at Dylan. It's Emily's fault for not paying attention to you, you say? Ah, no, that's not what I meant, Dylan said, avoiding eye contact. Suddenly, he pointed a finger at Kate. But she kept coming on to me, she was so persistent, and I just couldn't say no, so... Willing to throw even his beloved girlfriend under the bus just to protect himself. Clearly, the one he loves most is himself. Excuse me? You're the one who came on to me. An infuriated Kate said while Dylan whispered to her, Just go along with the story for now. But it seems Kate values herself the most, just like Dylan. The truth is, Dylan was the one who approached me. He kept insisting that he's been in love with me for the past two years. I have a family, so I refused. But he just wouldn't take no for an answer. Wanna see the text proof? I'm the victim here, who was dragged into this affair against my will. Dylan, with a face contorted in despair, looked up to see Kate looking down at him smugly. The mother clapped her hands loudly. You say you're the victim? Emily is the real victim here. You're the one at fault, Kate shrugged her shoulders. Under the intimidating presence of the parents, Dylan became more defiant, his displeasure evident. It's so unfair, Emily. You called your parents here to lecture me? Ganging up on me with allies on your side, that's so low of you. You're such a cowardly woman who can't do anything on her own. His anger directed at me, even before any sign of remorse. How much does he look down on me? I thought, it's not unfair. I didn't just call my parents. I flung the room door open. There stood Dylan's parents, looking quite uncomfortable. Mom! Dylan recoiled as if he'd been shot. He had never shown his true self even to his own parents. They adored him as their perfect, accomplished son. I didn't expect them to be on my side, but I called them to show them the truth. Even if I told them, nobody would believe that Dylan uses terrible language at home. So I wanted them to see it with their own eyes. T Having played the part of the perfect son for so long, the harsh looks from his parents were a shock to Dylan. The harsh looks from his parents seemed to hurt Dylan the most. He held back his tears, standing wrapped in just a towel, looking utterly pitiful. I feel bad for Dylan, his mother whispered. It's not right to gang up on him like this. Maybe it was a bit too hard on Emily sometimes, but working outside, of course he's stressed, so it can't be helped. Let him vent a little at home. Dylan looked up, his face wet with tears. His mother ran to his side, holding his hand tightly. The affair was just a momentary lapse. No, I can see how it's Emily's fault, too. Inviting us to witness the affair was a nasty move. Poor thing, he must have gotten sick of his home life, his father nodded in agreement. That's right. What's with this treatment over a simple affair? Yes, yes. People have always said that affairs are a mark of a man's prowess. What's the big deal? Do you find it fun to crush a man's pride like this? Yes, every man has an affair or two. Heck, I've always had a woman or two on the side. His wife, who had been nodding along, suddenly looked alarmed. You, you've been cheating too? The scene quickly shifted to the parents-in-law having a heated argument. 
While she defended Dylan earlier, the moment she found out she was being cheated on, she lost her cool. I wish they would just leave as they weren't helping but instead were making things worse. His father looked at me with pleading eyes, but I wasn't about to help him. Dylan, now with no one on his side and exposed for who he truly is, was lost. Kate, who had kept quiet, seized the opportunity to escape from my house, but at her home were her husband, child, and Ariel. Of course I had informed her husband about the affair. I had left Ariel with him to shield the child from witnessing any shocking scenes. Yet Kate, dressed only in a towel, rushed into their home, causing even more chaos. Mama, you are disgusting Emily's child, who should have known nothing, sensed the atmosphere, and strongly rejected. Dylan and Kate both lost their family's trust because of their selfish affair. That day, Ariel and I took refuge at our parents' house. I thought we were headed for a divorce, but a few days later, Dylan came begging for forgiveness. I'm so sorry. For what exactly are you sorry? Um, for the affair I had. I really messed up. When I thought I might lose you, Emily, I suddenly realized how important you are to me. I turned to face my parents. The three of us exchanged smiles. It's hard to tell if you're lying or not. You've always been all talk, just a smooth talker. Dylan bit his lip and pleaded. I'm not lying but it sure sounds like a lie to me. Please believe me. Dylan, with a serious look, even went as far as kneeling. Why is he so desperate to reconcile? It's clearly for his own benefit. If I divorce you, it'll admit the rumors are true, huh? Dylan went pale. It turns out Dylan and Kate's shameful acts had been exposed to the public. Our balcony has gaps in the railing, making everything visible from outside. Instead of laying low, it seems Dylan and Kate had a loud argument on the balcony. Thanks to that spectacle, there were many witnesses, some of whom even worked at the same company. What? You're saying Kate and I were causing a scene on the balcony without our clothes. That can't be right. It must have been a misunderstanding. Not to brag, but we're a happy couple. Still head over heels in love. That's how he's been brushing it off at work. So he's desperate to avoid a divorce. It's frustrating how Dylan only thinks about himself. You get caught in an embarrassing situation and you still play the good guy? Don't you think everyone has caught on to your happy couple act by now? Well, um, in fact, I've been getting tons of messages from former colleagues. On the surface, they seem concerned about me, but what they really want to know is if the rumors are true. I've been replying humbly, I'm sorry, I can't really say. This answer seems to satisfy everyone. I'm begging you. I've learned my lesson from this. I'm never going to cheat again. I promise. Please give me another chance. No way, Dylan. Emily, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I won't cheat again. Please forgive me. Dylan repeatedly bows deeply, his forehead touching the floor. You think just apologizing for the affair will make everything right? Your sins aren't limited to the affair. You've made a mockery of me for years. Why would I come back to someone like that? I... I'm sorry. I won't say cruel things anymore. That's probably a lie too, isn't it? Dylan's every move seems like a mere performance. It's only natural not to trust a liar. Eventually, I managed to finalize the divorce from Dylan. He was reluctant to pay alimony and child support for Ariel, but when I told him I'd ask his employer to deduct it from his paycheck, he paid up right away. But Dylan is still pretending to be happily married, bringing fake homemade lunches to work that are just store-bought meals repackaged. His shirts are wrinkled and his suits reportedly have a slight odor. It's so pitiful that no one really confronts him about it. He'd probably have been better off going back to his parents' house, but it turns out his parents were also in a big dispute and got divorced. My father-in-law was furious, saying, it's all because of Dylan that she got divorced. My mother-in-law has cut ties with Dylan, exclaiming, such a deceitful duo. It makes my skin crawl. Kate apologized to her husband and expressed her wish to move out. However, he simply told her, just leave on your own, essentially asking for a divorce. Of course, the children aren't coming with her. Word is she quit her job, even at her age, Unable to bear the whispers and rumors, she vanished without even handing in a resignation letter. Even her family doesn't know where she is now. On the other hand, 
I'm still staying with my parents. I was on edge, thinking I needed to find a job and a place to live ASAP to be independent. However, mom comforted me saying, you don't need to hesitate even with your parents. You can stay here forever if you want to. I'm sorry, we didn't believe what you said from the beginning, Emily. My parents apologized deeply. It was wrong of us to only believe in Dylan's facade and not listen to your words, Emily. Regardless of how unbelievable it sounds, parents should always believe and listen to their child. Everyone makes mistakes. If only I had been stronger, maybe I could have stood up to Dylan and built a peaceful family. Mom has always been on my side, hasn't she? Ariel, who was by my side, snuggled up to me. I know I can't be perfect, but I want to be a mother who can protect Ariel's precious smile. Are you hungry, Ariel and Emily? What do you want to have for dinner? Meatloaf. Both Ariel and I answered in unison to my mother's question. A lively and fun new life begins. You should forgive me for stealing some money. After all, we're family. That was my husband's justification when he was taking money from my purse. However, when he was initially caught, he didn't say anything as severe. Instead, he sincerely apologized and paid me back. I ended up being lenient, but it was later revealed that he had also been stealing from our son. When I found out, I resolved to disclose his wrongdoings to our son and mother-in-law who lived with us. There's no need to be considerate any longer to a man who causes trouble not only to me, but also to our son. I've kept quiet so far, but the truth is that my husband, in a fit of anger I exposed Greg's misconducts. My name is Mary Miller. I'm 46, working part-time and a housewife at home. I married Greg 20 years ago. He's a serious company employee and I think he's a good husband. Now we're living as a family of four, including our 17-year-old son Mark and my mother-in-law, Mrs. Deborah. Lately, Mark has been feeling cold more often, perhaps because of his rebellious face. But Mark is a kind-hearted boy and is currently working hard to study for college admission. I believe this rebellious phase will pass in time, so it's just a matter of enduring until then. Mrs. Deborah recently lost her husband due to an illness. She used to live with her husband, but after his death, we thought it would be difficult for the elderly Mrs. Deborah to continue living alone, so she moved in with us. However, having lost her beloved husband, Mrs. Deborah has been feeling down for a while. She's usually mild-mannered and laughs a lot, so her current state is worrisome. I tried to be as gentle as I could with Mrs. Deborah in an attempt to alleviate her emotional burden. Despite these issues, we were a normal family living reasonably happy days. However, happiness proved to be a fragile thing, capable of collapsing without warning. One day, I went shopping. And when I tried to pay, I realized three $10 bills were missing. I had withdrawn them from the ATM the previous day and had definitely put them in my purse. The purse was securely closed in my bag and it was unlikely that the bills would slip out and fall on the road. Could it be that someone took them? A nasty suspicion crossed my mind, but there was no solid evidence. The loss was only $30, so I decided not to pursue it further and observe the situation. However, the next morning, more money was missing. This time, $50 was gone. It was definitely in my purse when I checked last night. The purse had been in the house all night, and there were no signs of a thief. Unpleasant as the thought was, I could only assume someone in the family took it. I decided to consult Greg about it. When I explained the situation in detail, Greg, looking evasive, said, Actually, I know who the culprit is. It's Mark. He was rummaging through your bag when he woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Maybe he thinks it's okay to do this much to his parents because he's going through a rebellious phase. I couldn't believe it. No matter how rebellious, Mark wouldn't resort to stealing money. Greg's shifting gaze was also concerning. So I proposed this. All right, I'll talk to Mark myself. I think he might be more willing to talk to me since we don't spend much time together. Greg readily agreed to this. It wasn't that I believed what Greg said, I... rather, his nervousness made me suspicious. I thought it might be best to clarify the perpetrator. I bought a small surveillance camera and installed it in an inconspicuous place. I positioned it so that it would capture my purse, which I left untouched for a day. When I checked my wallet, another $50 was missing. 
I checked the recorded footage, and there... Where was the culprit? It wasn't Mark. It was Greg, making sure there was no one around. He didn't hesitate to take money from my wallet. Seeing this, I felt intense anger. Stealing money is bad enough, but trying to frame my son was something I couldn't forgive. When I confronted Greg with the evidence, he was flustered and stuttered. No, that's not it. I mean, what do you mean that's not it? It's clear as day that you're the one stealing. Why would you do such a thing? Greg began to explain in resignation, I have a gambling debt. I was desperate for money. I was completely thrown off. I had no idea that Greg was gambling or that he had a debt. Is that true? Yeah, it's not a lie. Greg brought out some documents. They indicated that he was in debt for a total of $5,000. Oh no, I was at a loss for words. Greg began to desperately explain. I thought you would be mad if I told the truth, so I blamed Mark. I'm sorry for lying and keeping my debt a secret. I have a plan to pay it back, and I'm slowly repaying it from my salary. I'll make sure Mark goes to college and you won't have any trouble living. Greg apologized many times and repaid the money. Since he seemed genuinely remorseful, I decided to forgive him. All right, I'll trust you this one time. But if you do it again, I won't forgive you. I was stern in my warning, but I didn't want to worry Mark or Mrs. Deborah unnecessarily, so I decided to keep quiet for the time being. But as they say, trouble comes in threes. This was just the beginning of real hardships. A week after the debt was revealed, Greg kept his promise and stopped stealing money from my purse. But when Greg came home, he looked very gloomy and said, my salary has been cut. According to Greg, his company was not doing well recently, and his salary had to be cut by almost $1,000. With a debt and Mark's college tuition to save up for, what are we supposed to do? I was at a loss. After thinking about it, I decided to take on more part-time work. I started working at a 24-hour fast food restaurant from late at night until early morning. It would be physically tough, but the night shift paid more, so I decided to give it a try. Obviously, I had to tell Mark and Mrs. Deborah about this, so I called them into the living room. Then, Mark said he had something serious to discuss, so I decided to listen to his story first. I thought it would be about his studies or college plans. But what he said was completely unexpected. For about a week, money has been disappearing from my piggy bank. Yesterday I saw Dad opening my piggy bank without my permission. When I asked him what he was doing, he dodged the question. It was suspicious. Hearing this, I was at a loss for words. Mrs. Deborah had a look of disbelief on her face. Could it be that Greg had changed his target to Mark? The idea of a husband stealing money from his own son was unthinkable. But then again, Greg has a history of trying to pin his own guilt on Mark, and he's strapped for cash. At that moment, Mrs. Deborah said something shocking. When Greg was in high school, he once tried to steal a video game he had borrowed from a classmate. I thought it was okay because I scolded him severely. Come to think of it, things frequently disappeared when I was a member of my college club. Greg was also a member of that club. By this point, it was only natural to consider Greg as the culprit. For now, I decided to hold on to Mark's piggy bank, so you have something to say to us too, right? What's going on? Mark asked me, so I told them both, actually, I have to take on a part-time job in the morning and at night. Why? Do you and Greg not have enough money? Mrs. Deborah asked. I was not sure how much to say, but I decided to tell them everything. There's no need to tiptoe around a man who not only inconveniences me, but also our son. I've kept it from you two, but actually my husband. I confessed Greg's misdeeds seething with anger. Two weeks later, Mark, Mrs. Deborah, and I intercepted Greg, who claimed to be going to work on his day off, and brought him to the living room. What's going on? I'm gonna be late for work. Make it quick. I looked at Greg with a cold stare as he said that. You're lying about going to work on your day off, aren't you? You've really quit your job. Greg's face turned pale instantly. What are you talking about? There's no way I quit my job. How many lies do you have to tell to be satisfied? I called your company and asked them directly. There's no mistake. When I yelled at him like that, Greg froze, his body trembling. You supposedly resigned for personal reasons. But the truth is, you were stealing money from your co-workers' wallets and quit because you were about to get caught, right? Greg stared in disbelief, seemingly shocked that I knew even this. 
I had called one of Greg's former colleagues who reluctantly told me. About two months ago, a female employee was making a fuss about money missing from her wallet. After that, similar incidents kept happening. Greg mentioned he had debts at a party, and he was always looking at people's wallets and bags. Plus, in his department, there were rumors that things always went missing. It was just pens and clips, and the loss was insignificant. There was no evidence of theft, so they've been handling it quietly. His colleague never claimed Greg was the culprit, but it seemed like he believed Greg was very likely involved. You're the one who did it, aren't you? When I sternly asked him that, Greg answered with a frightened nod, yes. But that wasn't the only secret Greg had. I pulled out an envelope and took out a few photos. Greg instantly looked away when he saw them, but I shoved them in front of his face. The photos showed Greg and a beautiful woman holding hands and walking. This clearly looks like an affair, doesn't it? I hired a private investigator to look into it. Be ready to pay child support. As I glared at Greg, he frantically started babbling about his affair. I met her randomly on the street. I fell in love with her before I knew it. She told me she truly loves me too. I was even angrier now, so I decided to deliver another blow to Greg. Greg, do you know your mistress's real name? Of course it's Emily Davis, right? To Greg who was wondering why I asked that, I revealed the truth. Sorry, that's a pseudonym. Her real name is Jessica Turner. She has a criminal record for fraud. No, that's a lie. There's no way Emily would commit fraud. Greg remained adamantly in denial, so I searched Jessica Turner on my smartphone and showed him an online article. In the article, Jessica Turner had been arrested for fraud, and there was a photo of her face. It was the same face as Greg's mistress. Well, are you ready to believe it now? Don't you think she got close to you just to swindle your money? When I said this with a disgusted tone, Greg murmured, No way. And seemed to collapse. Seeing Greg's face filled with despair, I felt a small sense of relief in my chest. This was his punishment for cheating. But even so, it was almost poetic that a liar like Greg would be approached by a fraudster. Birds of a feather flock together, as they say. I was angry, but at the same time I was also flabbergasted. But there was still something left that I wanted to say to Greg. I showed him a piece of paper. It was a divorce paper that I had asked a lawyer to prepare. I can't be married to a man like you anymore. You'd better prepare yourself for a divorce. But then Greg said, please forgive me. I have debts and I've lost my job. If you divorce me now, I'll be in financial trouble. I admit that I've stolen various things, but it's not a significant amount of money. I only intended to borrow it and I plan to return it. Besides, we're family. Can't you forgive me for stealing money? He chose another woman over me. Now he's asking for forgiveness. He says he intended to return it, but I doubt how much of that is true. I was about to yell at Greg, but then a loud voice said, enough is enough. It was Mrs. Deborah. It's not about the amount of money or family. Stealing from others is wrong. How can you not understand that even as an adult? And to top it off, you cheated. I can no longer see you as my son. Please let me cut ties with you. Greg's face instantly looked like he was about to cry. You're my mother, right? Can't you defend me a little? Because he had the audacity to beg like that, I decided to give him a piece of my mind. When I told Mrs. Deborah about your debts and how you stole my money, she was unbelievably angry. It was Mrs. Deborah who suggested calling your employer and hiring a private investigator. As I explained why I had to take a part-time job, Mrs. Deborah yelled, What? What is he thinking? causing trouble for his precious family? There was absolutely no trace of the usually mild-mannered Mrs. Deborah. She was more angry than I had ever seen her before. We can't let this go. We have to take revenge. Greg might be hiding something else, so let's investigate thoroughly this time. She said this and quickly laid out a plan for revenge. It's true what they say, the kindest people are the scariest when they get angry. When I pointed this out, Greg must have realized that even his mother wouldn't help him. This time he clung to Mark. Hey Mark, you're a high schooler, but you wouldn't want to lose your dad, would you? Stand up for me. But Mark, his face bright red, glared at Greg. I don't need a dad who steals and cheats. How dare you betray mom? Being abandoned by his son, Greg finally seemed to realize that he had no allies left. He was crying, 
But when Mrs. Deborah told him to apologize to Mary and Mark properly, with a stern voice, he was pressured by her intensity and kept apologizing. I'm really sorry. I've reflected on my actions. It was too late for apologies. I couldn't possibly forgive him. If you're truly remorseful, listen to my wish. Agree to the divorce immediately. If you have any objections, hire a lawyer. I thrust the divorce papers at him again and finally, Greg seemed to accept our divorce. Afterwards, we reclaimed the money Greg stole and kicked him out of the house. We filed for divorce. Then, through our lawyer, we made a claim for child support. Perhaps finally sensing the gravity of the situation, he made a lump sum payment. After that, it seemed Greg was in serious financial trouble. Due to not only gambling, but also lavishing luxury items on his mistress, he had accumulated actual debt of about $10,000. He must have racked up an astronomical amount of debt considering the amount he continued borrowing, but that's not my concern. Moreover, Greg was abandoned by his mistress. Probably she was just after his money. Greg seemed to want to sue her for fraud, but since he was the one who voluntarily lavished her, he gave up in the end. Furthermore, two months after the divorce, Greg was arrested for embezzling money from his company. I made sure to inform Greg's former company that he had been a habitual thief. We considered turning him into the police ourselves, but we decided to leave it to the people of the victimized company. Considering my husband's habit of lying, there might still be things he's hiding. Probably because I warned them, the company seemed to thoroughly investigate their finances. As a result, Greg's embezzlement was exposed. I wonder how much crime that man needs to commit to be satisfied. It was definitely the right decision to sever ties with him. If not careful, I might have been implicated in his crimes. With Greg, the breadwinner, gone, I managed to secure a full-time job through an acquaintance. I have enough income to support Mark and Mrs. Deborah. Mrs. Deborah is also working part-time. When I divorced Greg, Mrs. Deborah said, I'm sorry my son has caused you so much trouble. I have caused so much trouble. I can no longer impose on you, so I will leave. However, living alone as a senior can be worrisome. Both Mark and I love Mrs. Deborah very much. You and Greg are completely different people. I consider you a part of my precious family, so please stay with us forever. I managed to convince Mrs. Deborah to stay with us. She seems to have regained some vitality by working part-time and living her new life. Recently, she has been smiling more. Mark, who was deeply shocked by the recent incident, also seems to be regaining his energy. Perhaps understanding our home situation, he even helps out with household chores sometimes. It seems like peaceful days are about to return to our home. I'm trying to forget about Greg and focus on my own life with a positive mindset. I want to continue working hard to support my family. I feel like a bright future is waiting for us. Don't drink or eat, just work. The person saying this in front of me is my mother-in-law, Emily. As I sat in the chair, she suddenly approached and blurted that out. When I expressed my desire to rest for a bit to my shock, she suddenly kicked my belly, even though I am seven months pregnant. It seems like no one around noticed, but one person is silently watching. As soon as Emily sat down, that person stood up and started heading my way. My name is Suzanne Williams. I am turning 35 this year. I met my husband Robert back in high school, and we reconnected at a reunion after we started working. We hit it off and started hanging out, and as time went on we started dating. We got married when I was 27. We wanted kids, but for some reason, even after five years of marriage, we couldn't conceive. Being with Robert was fun and happy, but I always had a strong desire to have children. After another three years, paying attention to my cycle, diet, and various other factors, I finally became pregnant. By the time I reached 35, most of my peers had already started raising their kids. Having many friends with parenting experience made my life easier. But then at seven months pregnant, the most challenging event of my life occurred. Robert and I have been married for eight years, and there are still things I respect about him. But when it comes to his parents, it's a different story. Especially Emily, my mother-in-law, she's the real problem. I never really got along with Emily. I first met her before our wedding, 
and she wasn't friendly from the beginning. She even made comments about Robert's past relationships including his ex-fiancé. His fiancé was present, and she also had issues with the gift I brought. What's this? I asked, holding up the package. Some exclusive New York treat? I've never heard of it. I wanted some European pastries. You're so thoughtless, she scolded. I had asked Robert what Emily would like, thinking she might have a preference. He mentioned she had been wanting to try a unique treat only found in New York, so I went out of my way to get it. But Emily denied ever wanting it, leaving Robert chuckling awkwardly. But didn't you say you wanted to try this the other day? I asked. She took the time to get it for you. You should be grateful. Robert tried to defend me, but Emily glared at me and went to her room. Considering our first meeting went like this, I had reservations about marrying Robert. What saved me was Robert always having my back. When I expressed concerns about living with Emily, he assured me we would never move in with his parents. From then on, Robert always supported me that I didn't really have any complaints, except for the fact that we had to visit his parents' house regularly. I didn't like it, but I knew I couldn't ignore my in-laws. However, we only visited a few times a year, so it wasn't too painful. Emily, being old-fashioned, believed that men should drink and women should do house chores without taking breaks. I tried to contribute as much as I could, serving drinks and preparing food, but Emily never seemed satisfied. Among the gathered relatives, I was one of the younger women, and many told me I could relax and sit. I took their advice, but when Emily saw, she dragged me into another room. Don't you feel embarrassed? She scolded. Sitting down will make Robert look bad. But nowadays, not many people think like that, I responded. Don't talk back. You should just listen to me, she snapped. When I talked to Robert about it, he confronted Emily. But that only made things worse, and she became even more hostile towards me. Feeling that way, I vowed in my heart to overcome challenges without consulting anyone if I could handle them. As I visited my in-law's house a few times, I gradually understood how to behave, and the visits became less of a burden. That's when they found out I was pregnant. The baby was a boy, and Robert and I were overjoyed, deciding to have a grand celebration. Not only did we celebrate just the two of us, but my family also threw a celebration for us. Hearing this, Emily started suggesting that her family should also have a celebration at their house. By then, I was already about seven months pregnant, and I was experiencing significant pelvic pain and backaches. I wouldn't have wanted to go if it was like before, being asked to help around the house, but since it was a celebration, I was told I didn't have to do anything. On the day of the gathering, when I arrived at the in-laws, not only were my husband's parents there, but also his siblings and their families. They all wanted to celebrate with us. Honestly, I was taken aback because I hadn't expected all the relatives to come, but it meant they were eagerly awaiting the birth of our baby. I chose a seat at the end of the table so I could easily step away if needed. Everyone started drinking alcohol at the toast, but since I was pregnant, I stuck to drinking tea. While I was sitting and enjoying my meal, I felt a tap on my shoulder. It was Emily, looking displeased. I wondered if I had done something wrong, but that wasn't it. Hey, what are you sitting around for? Being pregnant isn't an excuse to avoid work. You should come help out too, she demanded. I wouldn't have come if I knew there would be work. And for the sake of my unborn child, I wanted to stay as relaxed as possible. But Emily seemed oblivious to that and kept insisting. Even after I explained the difficulties of being seven months pregnant, she wouldn't hear any of it. Reluctantly, I began to assist her, but soon my body couldn't take it anymore and I crumpled onto the floor. Feeling I couldn't stand any longer, I found a moment when Emily wasn't around to sit on a kitchen chair. From the kitchen, I could hear the joyful laughter of relatives gathered in the living room. I've heard that by the seventh month, babies can hear sounds, so I was glad my baby could hear these cheerful voices. Suddenly, Emily, who had been in another room, returned and saw me. She was furious. A daughter-in-law should work her fingers to the bone without eating or drinking, she said. With that, she kicked towards my stomach. I instinctively protected my belly, but Emily's foot grazed my side. The impact was so painful I fell to the floor, crumpling in pain. I hoped someone around would help, 
but since the living room had a limited view of the kitchen, nobody seemed to notice. However, upon closer inspection, someone did seem to be watching, but did nothing to intervene or stop Emily. Just because you're the daughter-in-law, doesn't mean you can get carried away. I've never liked you. What if the child isn't even Robert's? Emily spat out. I needed a break, so I headed back to the living room. With all the relatives there, I thought Emily wouldn't dare lay a hand on me. Indeed, once I was in the living room, she did nothing but glare. Robert, in fact, hadn't come to this gathering. Unfortunately, he had work and was going to join us after finishing his morning shift. So, I felt rather vulnerable without him there. Amidst my unease, my father-in-law Harry came and sat next to me. Are you alright? You seem a bit off. Didn't Emily do something to you earlier? He asked. Did you see earlier? I couldn't see clearly since I have bad eyes. But it seemed like you two were having a disagreement. If something happened, please tell me. I was hesitant about telling Harry everything, but I decided to tell him the truth. I told him how Emily has been making snide comments harassing me and even kicked me in the stomach today. Harry listened quietly, but the moment I finished he looked furious and said, I'll apologize on her behalf. I'm really sorry. I think you should go to the hospital right away. Robert will be here soon, so have him drive you. A quietly angry Harry was really scary. He was always a man of few words. Maybe it's people like him that you should be afraid of when they get mad. I left the rest to Harry and waited in the living room for Robert. But once Emily finished her chores, she came into the living room and tried to sit in front of me. That's when Harry stood up, walked over to her, and poured his drink all over her. Everyone around, including the relatives, were shocked and started murmuring. What the heck, Harry? Is this alcohol? Why would you do that? Aren't wives supposed to work without eating or drinking? Aren't you a wife too? Hearing this, the relatives began to whisper amongst themselves. What does he mean? Wives should work without eating or drinking. I've never heard of such a thing, and we've never imposed such a rule. You said that to Suzanne, didn't you? She told me earlier. Hearing Harry's words, the relatives looked at each other in shock. Who even says that kind of thing nowadays? This isn't true. What's not true? Do you even realize what you did? Kicking a pregnant woman in the stomach? The relatives became even more alarmed at this revelation. What? She kicked Suzanne's stomach? But Suzanne is pregnant, right? That's unbelievable. Seeing her actions exposed in front of everyone, Emily started to panic and began making excuses. No, that's not true. I didn't kick her. It was just a slight bump. Suzanne's lying to frame me. Don't believe her. However, it seemed everyone was on my side. They stood in front of me, shielding me from Emily. As the argument continued, we heard Robert's voice from the entrance. Seems quiet today. Saying that, as he walked into the living room, Robert seemed to be struggling to comprehend the scene unfolding before him. He stopped talking and just stared in our direction. What happened? Turns out, Emily supposedly kicked Suzanne in the stomach. She's denying it, though. What? She knows Suzanne's pregnant, right? What was she thinking? Relax, Robert. I'm fine and the baby's moving as usual. I'm going to get checked at the hospital later, so it's okay. Although I reassured everyone, I was honestly quite worried. My baby seemed fine, and I felt okay except for some rib pain. I believe a checkup at the hospital will confirm that everything's alright. However, I might need to reconsider my relationship with Emily moving forward. As Emily continued making excuses, both Robert and Harry supported me. Emily is making excuses, but Robert is on my side. Harry is also taking care of me, who is pregnant. I'm totally on Suzanne's side. You are too, right, Dad? Yes, Suzanne is carrying our grandchild. What was Emily thinking? Suzanne, you should go to the hospital as soon as possible. First off, it seemed that no one trusted Emily. Emily was being ganged up on by relatives. I've been sending money out of respect for you, but I can't take it anymore. Um, yeah. Stay out of my family's life from now on. What the hell is that? Who do you think raised you? I was raised by Dad. He worked hard to support our family, and when he came home, he would make simple meals for us. He even took us to the amusement park on his days off. What did you ever do for me? I gave birth to you. Isn't that enough? 
It seemed Emily couldn't recall anything she had done for Robert after thinking for a while. The relatives looking exasperated and Harry looked distressed. I've been thinking about what to do and honestly, I want to distance myself from you. What do you mean by distance? I mean, I want a divorce. You don't work, you don't do anything around the house. Now that Robert is on his own, I've been thinking about divorce. Seems like the right time. Divorce? You're never gonna get that from me. Emily said this and ran out of the house. Nobody had a clue where she went, but it seemed like everyone was relieved with her absence. After confirming that Emily had left, I asked Robert to take me to the hospital. Robert promptly brought the car to the front and drove me to the nearest hospital. The examination results were fine, but I had a large bruise on my side. The doctor said it should heal over time. Rest up. If you needed any documentation or photos for evidence, just let me know. I had Robert take a picture of the bruise to keep his evidence. Sometime after that, Robert and I went to Harry's house to talk things over. What? We thought Emily might be there, but it seemed she wasn't. When we asked Harry about Emily's whereabouts, he said he didn't know. He said, remember when she stormed out the other day? I changed the locks after that so Emily can't get in. She did come back once, but left once she realized she couldn't get in. Um, you mentioned about getting a divorce. Were you serious about that? Yeah, I've been thinking about it for a while. I'm really sorry for what Suzanne had to go through. I'll support whatever decision you make. Although I was scared, there wasn't any harm to the baby, and the bruise was almost healed. But if Emily can't come back, how are they planning to get divorced? As I was pondering this, Harry spoke up. Apparently, he's already hired a top-notch lawyer experienced in divorce cases. According to Harry, it seems Emily has been having an affair with a single man living nearby. He kept quiet about her affair, thinking it might upset Robert, but he has decided to divorce after the recent events. Furthermore, there's a high chance Emily is now staying at her lover's place, and he's mailed a legal notice there. It should arrive soon, but who knows what will happen. The initial plan for this discussion was to keep Emily away, but if they're getting divorced, maybe it's fine if we visit Harry's house. At that moment, I remembered how Harry protected me when Emily kicked me and made a proposal. Why don't you come live with us? We had previously said we never wanted to live together, so both Robert and Harry looked at me in shock. I wasn't even sure why I made such a suggestion, but I felt gratitude towards Harry for helping me. Harry had bad knees and living alone would be tough. Sending him to a nursing home didn't feel right either, so I thought living with us would be the best solution. And with Harry, living together might even be fun. At first, Harry was reluctant, but after several discussions, he agreed. So it was decided we'd sell Harry's house and have him move in with us. You never know when Emily might come storming in, and if she's served with divorce papers, she might lash out. So we decided Robert should take some time off from work to focus on the move. A few days after Harry successfully moved, I received a call from Emily, yelling and asking where Harry had gone. Apparently, Emily had broken a window and entered the house, not knowing how to turn off the blaring alarm. However, the family had already sold the house and new people lived there, so Emily was trespassing. Just as I thought she'd done something outrageous, Emily let out a small scream. While still on the phone, I could hear police sirens in the background, and shortly after, a voice from an officer, and then the call cut off. Emily ended up being arrested for breaking and entering, so I went to visit her with Harry and a lawyer. She seemed surprised to see both me and the lawyer, expecting only Harry, but quickly composed herself. Suzanne, what are you doing here? I don't want anything to do with you. That's why I want a divorce. That's why I brought the attorney today. I've told you, I'm not getting a divorce. I'll never do it. Regardless of Emily's pleas, she and Harry eventually divorced. Emily was quite a handful, even causing a scene at the police station and had to be restrained. While Harry felt pity for Emily and didn't demand alimony from her. I feel so bad letting you pay. No, I'll be relying on you two from now on, so let me do this for you. Plus, I'm so grateful you agreed to live with me. I might even get to see my grandchildren soon. I'm a lucky man. During dinner, Harry, moved by emotion, started to cry. Seeing him, both Robert and I also began to cry. 
earning us some odd looks from the restaurant staff, a memory we all cherish. A few months later, I safely gave birth to a baby boy. Both mother and child were healthy and it was said to be one of the smoothest deliveries. Perhaps the breathing techniques and mindset a friend had taught me during pregnancy played a role. The baby was so tiny, I felt that if I took my eyes off him for a second, he'd disappear. While it was primarily my responsibility to care for our son, both Robert and Harry said they'd help out in any way they could. True to their word, Robert would do chores like grocery shopping and cleaning dishes when he got home, and Harry would look after the baby. I can focus on taking care of my son, and I don't feel any signs of postpartum depression. Though I used to have an unstable disposition, now I don't feel any of that. I think it's because I'm living a happy life. I never told anyone this, but early in my marriage, Emily's harassment was so severe that I considered divorcing Robert. But Robert always stood by my side and helped me out. Still, there were times I felt I couldn't bear it. Now though, I feel fortunate about my relationships and am glad I didn't divorce. Emily, though mean and unpleasant, is someone we won't have to deal with anymore. She was given probation but kept shoplifting because she was out of money. Unable to pay bail, she ended up in prison. I wouldn't say money is everything, but seeing Emily's situation, it feels like without money, happiness is hard to come by. So I'm careful not to splurge unnecessarily and want to spend on my son as much as I can. I can't work right now, but soon I'm going to start a part-time job and save up for my son's future. A lot happened during my pregnancy, but when I think about it, it's all part of my life journey and I cherish it. From now on, as a family of four, we've made up our minds to work together towards even greater happiness. Huh? There's no way I can do that. Absolutely not. Isn't that a bit harsh to say? Dealing with Alzheimer's is just too much hassle, you know? I have my mother to take care of, right? I pleaded with my husband to live together with my mother who had developed Alzheimer's, but he flat out refused as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Growing up, my father passed away when I was young and I was raised by my mother. I wanted to be of help to her in any way I could. Yeah, right. Taking care of such a person is just unpleasant. T we might as well put her in a really cheap facility or something, don't you think? What's with that dissatisfied look? Don't tell me you haven't given up yet. Just give up. It's impossible. Do these two even have a heart? Being rejected to this extent, even I couldn't help but feel down. All right, I give up on living with my mother. There you go. You should have just said that from the start. But it's really sad to give up so easily, don't you think? Poor mom. I clenched my fists, channeling all my anger into them. Two years later. Now, my mother-in-law has developed dementia. We'll take care of her here, so you better take good care of her. Why do I have to do that? She's your mother. The anger towards my own mother, which I had almost forgotten, exploded. Don't get angry, all right? If you're gonna talk like that, I have my own thoughts on the matter. I might just leave her in the mountains. My husband and mother-in-law will definitely pay for everything they've done, including what they did back then. My name is Alice and I'm turning 50 this year. I've worked hard as a housewife since marrying my husband John, a former co-worker, following his wish. We wanted to have children, but it was not easy. And we even tried fertility treatments. Let's not decide it's impossible just yet. Let's give it a shot. But what if it still doesn't work? What if everything ends up being a waste? Don't worry about it. So let's try together. He hugged me gently, and I remember feeling really reassured. It was the moment I felt truly loved by my husband. We continued with the fertility treatments, and just before I turned 30, we were blessed with a daughter, Julia. You did great. Thank you. From now on, let's do our best as a family of three. Yes, I couldn't help but cry tears of joy for the safe arrival of our daughter. My husband was happy too, thinking that we could finally be a happier family than ever before. The Thor? But there was someone who cast a shadow on our family time. You finally had her. I was really worried about what we would do if you couldn't have children. Hey, that's not something you should say. Well, it's true, isn't it? What value does a woman have if she can't even have children properly? Even though our newborn daughter was right there, my mother-in-law still hurled such heartless words at me. 
This wasn't the first time she treated me this way. It, it started when I first went to meet them for marriage introductions. So you're Alice? Nice to meet you. Feeling nervous? My mother-in-law hit me with a shocking statement. You kind of have a poor vibe. But what do your parents do? My father passed away when I was little. Now my mother works part-time. Her expression turned even more severe than before. I see that explains a lot. Excuse me? Her stern face suddenly turned into laughter. I was taken aback, but my husband immediately came to my rescue. It doesn't matter, does it? Besides, we're in the same boat. His father also passed away from cancer when he was in high school. You know, my father was a high earner, so he left us a lot of money. Unlike you. I was filled with anxiety about becoming a part of this family. However, I made up my mind when my husband held my hand tightly. In the end, we decided to get married. But as time went by, my mother-in-law's outrageous behavior escalated. What brings you here today? Is it bad that I came to visit? No, not at all. My mother-in-law started coming over unannounced after my daughter started kindergarten. That would have been fine, but she started treating me like a maid because she wanted to play with my daughter. What on earth have I done to her? Nothing, really. She probably just enjoys bullying me. Oh dear, we're out of snacks. Alice, could you go buy some? Excuse me? Why are you so surprised? I can't leave right now, so you go? Looking at my daughter, I could tell she wanted to go with me. Maybe she understood her grandmother's true nature, even at her young age. I was reluctant to leave them alone together. Spending too much time with her could be a bad influence. I worried. Julia seems like she wants to go too. What are you talking about? Julia wants to play with me. Julia, let's play when I come back, okay? Julia just nodded silently. After that, my mother-in-law started coming over when Julia was not around. Especially during weekdays when my husband was not at home. She must be really mean to deliberately choose such times. Today, I came to teach Alice what being a wife is all about. I had a bad feeling about this. All I could wish for was for her to leave as soon as possible. I didn't want to be in the same space with her for a single second. First, you should clean and do the laundry until I say it's okay. Understood. I thought it was better not to resist and just follow her instructions. I decided to play along until my mother-in-law was satisfied. After finishing all the chores, I reported back to her. The cleaning and laundry are done. I looked at the living room in astonishment. Done? What do you mean by done? Look at this place. The living room which I had just cleaned was filled with trash. At that moment I understood. My mother-in-law had deliberately scattered the trash to trouble me. Just for goodness sake, you can't even clean properly. Maybe you were raised badly. Stop playing dumb and get to it. I was angry at her actions, but I held back my rage and started cleaning again. Once I finished cleaning the living room, she spoke to me again. Alice, it's not just cleaning, you can't even do the laundry properly. Look, everything is covered in mud. The laundry was hanging on the balcony and there was no mud in sight. She had deliberately dirtied it. Until now, I had tried to deal with this on my own, but I realized that it was impossible. I decided to talk to my husband about my mother-in-law's actions. My mom? Got it? I'll talk to her too. Really? Thank you. Thanks to my husband's intervention, my mother-in-law stopped coming to our house. I was finally able to have some peace for a while. All the stress from being bullied by her seemed to lift off my shoulders. However, this piece was short-lived. You really had the nerve to tattle on me last time. How dare a daughter-in-law stand up against her mother-in-law like that? You've got guts. Please just stop. Then I reported back to my husband again, and just in time my mother-in-law came back again. It was a repeated game of cat and mouse. After years of this, my husband eventually stopped saying anything to his mother. Before I knew it, I was already 48 years old. My daughter Julia is now in college and living on her own. I'm going to visit my parents' house today. Take care. It had been a long time since I had been back home. Trying to contain my excitement about seeing my mom, I headed to my parents' house. I had been feeling tired recently because of the constant nagging from my mother-in-law. But I knew that seeing my mom would help relieve some of that stress. Man and home. There was no response from my mom, who should have been at home. Worried that something might have happened, 
I hurried to the living room, and found my mom slumped on the sofa. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, why is Alice here? You came back home. My mom answering my question seemed quite different from before. She was staring blankly at one point. This sight made me feel an indescribable sense of anxiety. Why am I here? I told you I was coming home today. Did something happen? I've been forgetting things a lot recently. Forgetting things? Have you been to the doctor? Doctors? No, I haven't. Starting to get seriously worried, I convinced my mom to go to the hospital. I had never hoped more that my fears would be unfounded. Even in the car on the way to the hospital, our conversation was sometimes off. The test results show that your mother may have Alzheimer's. It hasn't progressed too far yet, but it could worsen rapidly in the future. Alzheimer's, and this was just the beginning. Hearing about my mom's condition, my mind went blank. My mom sitting next to me was also in shock. Who could have imagined this would happen? It's still in the early stages, but there are medications that can slow its progression. Is there a cure? The doctor paused for a moment before answering. His expression somber. A terrible premonition overwhelmed me. Unfortunately, with current medical technology, we can't completely cure it. I see. I felt pushed to the brink of despair. But my mom, perhaps concerned about me, smiled at me. I had to fight back tears. If I cried now, I knew it would only worry her more. It's out of our hands now. Doctor, may we go home for today? Yes, that's perfectly fine. We can also recommend facilities that provide nursing care when the time comes. Thank you. We'll consider it. Sure, just let us know. I don't really remember how we got back. Once back at my parents' house, we started discussing what to do next. What should we do? Anyone could end up like this. I'm fine. But I decided to go back to my husband. All the way home, I kept thinking about what I could do for my mom. Before I knew it, I was at the front door of my house. Hey, what's up? Why the long face? Actually, today I shared today's events with my husband. Alzheimer's. You're kidding. It's true. It seems it's still in the early stages, though. What are we going to do now? I'm not sure yet. But I'm thinking of checking on her regularly. That might be a good idea. I'll try to show up as much as I can, too. I was greatly comforted by my husband's words. He made me feel like I was not alone. I felt thankful once again that I married this man. From then on, my husband and I both went to see my mom. How are you doing? John, you came all this way. I'm on medication now, so I'm okay. That's good to know. If there's anything troubling you, please let me know. Thank you. I was nothing but grateful for my husband's concern for my mom. However, this did not last long. I went to see my mom on the weekends, sometimes even staying overnight. Apparently, my husband wasn't too happy about that. I'm gonna see mom again today. What about you? Then he sighed. Again? Isn't it about time you stopped? What do you mean? T going there every week isn't gonna make a difference. I was angry at his words. He had been so concerned about my mom before. That's not true. But Alzheimer's isn't curable, is it? And of course, it was at that moment that my mother-in-law decided to show up. Is something wrong? Look, I told you before that Alice's mom has Alzheimer's, right? She insists on going again. I see, that must be tough. My mother-in-law looked at me and smirked. I didn't want to see that malicious look on her face. You think so too, don't you? Alice will eventually be forgotten anyway. That's true. She's working so hard for nothing. Unable to bear their attitudes any longer, I left the house. Either way, I couldn't bring such people around my mother. From then on, I decided to visit her alone. But even so, I had someone on my side. I'll go with you next time. But aren't you busy? Grandma has always been so kind to me, unlike some people. My daughter had never liked my mother-in-law. Maybe it was because she saw me being bullied by her since she was little. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It was good to have my daughter with me. My mom seemed happy to see her granddaughter. We visited her several more times, and though my husband and mother-in-law kept making sarcastic remarks, I ignored them. It was at that moment. Can you come to the hospital? Tch. I have something to talk to you about. Got it. I'll be right there. I understood immediately. Sorry for calling you in today. And how is my mom? About the test results from last time, frankly, they're not good. She's on medication, but it seems to be less effective than before. 
What does that mean? In the near future, she might even forget her family. So, I suggest considering the facility we talked about before. Maybe that's the best for my mom right now. Give me a moment to think, please. Of course, here's a brochure if you'd like to take a look. Thank you. I had noticed that her forgetfulness was getting worse recently. Our memories didn't match up more and more. I was torn. Is it really okay to put my mom in a facility? Then I made up my mind and went home. What? No way, that's impossible. Don't talk like that. Alzheimer's is such a hassle. We already have my mother living with us, you know? I arrived home and immediately begged my husband to let my mom move in, but he flat out refused. My mother-in-law was there as usual today, but that doesn't matter. I still haven't repaid my mom for raising me. Right, taking care of someone like that is unpleasant. You might as well put her in a cheap facility. What's with that dissatisfied look? You haven't given up yet? It's impossible, so just give up. Do these two even have hearts? I couldn't help but feel down after being rejected like this. Fine. I give up on living with my mom. See? You should have just said so from the start. But giving up this easily is just sad for your mom. I clenched my fists as if to pour all my anger into them. I immediately opened the brochure I had received and called them. Soon after, preparations were underway, and in a week, she was able to move into the facility. I'm sorry, I really wanted to live together. It's okay, I can't trouble you any more than this. Don't say that, I'm not troubled. Plus, I'll come to check on you again. At this age, I realized that I'm still a child. Time passed and the disease progressed. Two years later, with the progression of Alzheimer's and her weakening internal organs, my mom passed away. I found out later that she had instructed the staff to keep quiet about her condition not wanting to worry me and my daughter. I knew it would come to this. It's not like it's Alzheimer's or anything. Either way, it's all the same. You're gonna work for this house from now on. Despite my mom's passing, my husband was completely unchanged. My mother-in-law didn't even come to my mom's funeral. Afterwards, I, eager to escape their clutches as soon as possible, somehow persuaded my husband and started working part-time. I wanted to save up funds while I could, planning to leave this house eventually. There's something I want to talk about. It was a month after my mom had passed away. Want to talk about what? Actually, my mom's had dementia for a bit now. Dementia. I acted surprised, but that wasn't the case. It was probably payback time for my mother-in-law. But she wouldn't understand that now. Also, we're going to take care of her here, so you better look after her properly. He dared say this after rejecting my offer to take care of my mother. I owed him no such favor. Why do I have to do that? She's your mom. The anger towards my mother that I had almost forgotten exploded. There's no need to get angry. If you're going to talk like that, I have my thoughts too. I'll abandon her in the mountains. I'd make my husband and mother-in-law pay for everything they'd done, including what happened just now. I swore to my mother. I decided to deliberately accept my husband's proposition. He complained, saying, I should have agreed from the start, but I didn't care. Mom's going to live with us starting today, so please. I understand. Enjoy it while it lasts. And then my mother-in-law arrived. It was my first time seeing her since she developed dementia. And she was clearly different. She seemed like someone else. I have to head out now, so I'm leaving the rest to you. You can count on me. I hadn't expected an opportunity to come so soon. After confirming my husband had left, I took my mother-in-law out. Where are we going? Somewhere really fun. So let's go together, okay? Okay. I quickly prepared the car and got my mother-in-law in. We headed to a secluded park on a small hill. It was a distance she could manage with her stamina. We're here, at the fun place. I left my mother-in-law at the park and drove to the office to get a divorce form. I quickly went back home, signed the form, and left the rest to fate. I then returned to my parents' house. About two hours later, my husband called. What the hell's going on? What do you mean? There's a divorce form, and my mom's gone. He was panicking. I could tell, even over the phone. It was laughable. I can't live with you any longer. Let's get a divorce. What? What are you suddenly talking about? So please take care of the rest. What about mom? She was gone before I realized, and I'm searching for her now. Why don't you go look for her, instead of staying there? 
I told my husband I was looking for her, but of course I wasn't. He had to figure out things on his own. I drove to my parents' house with a smile. Upon arrival, I prayed in front of my mother's portrait. Two hours later, my husband called. Did you find your mom? Yeah, I found her. I could tell from his voice that he was quite exhausted. Where are you? I've been looking around. You're coming back, right? Why would I? I told you we're getting a divorce. I haven't forgotten what you and your mother did to me. And I have no intention of forgiving you. Then my husband got angry. Is that so? Then don't ever come back here. Don't worry, I wasn't planning to. Soon after we officially got a divorce. Six months later, I landed a job at the company where my mother used to work. Everyone welcomed me, and I quickly got accustomed to the job. I was relaxing for the first time in a while when my smartphone rang. Hello. It was my ex-husband. My mom passed away the other day. You were right, I was wrong. I'm sorry to hear that. She's gone now. Can we give it another shot? My ex-husband was completely out of touch. T Why on earth should I get back together with him now? Do you even hear yourself? Even without your mother, there's zero percent chance of us getting back together. I'm sorry if this sounds harsh, but please don't drag me back into your life. I'm begging you, you're all I have. Any feelings I had for my ex-husband were long gone. I had decided to live on my own. Just live the rest of your life in regret. Goodbye. I hung up the phone and deleted his contact information. I could finally feel completely at peace. I didn't want that man to disturb me any longer. I had already started walking down a new path in life. 